Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Welcome, everyone, as we celebrate Palm Sunday and the Lord coming into Jerusalem. So nice to see so many people back, and we're so uh, blessed that uh, people are well and able to get out in the sunshine and, and uh, have come through a winter of perhaps problems, so we're very glad to have you all with us this morning. And those that will watch later on YouTube after we remember those folks that uh, watch us on the YouTube. So after a funny Sunday last week, we had to, to cancel, but uh, we're all here together this morning. A few announcements before we get to worship. That, yes, and we're, yes, we're glad that Nancy's back and had a, a nice restful time. Uh, away too. So Wednesday uh, at um, 11 o'clock, there's several of us been meeting for prayer. You're always welcome to join us for an hour or so and uh, we'll pray for the congregation and for those of the congregation for community. So everyone's always welcome at uh, on Wednesday at 11. Uh, our next movie night, there's one left in the series of The Chosen. It will be the 12th. We will not have one this Wednesday, but the, the following Wednesday, the 12th, at 645, we'll have the last of the series for uh, series one then. Uh, coffee chat this Wednesday. Wednesdays are busy days here. <laughs> Wednesday is a coffee chat at 10 o'clock. All are welcome for that. And... Um, of course, this Friday is Good Friday, and St. Paul's, uh, our sister church at uh, six or 526 Carluke Road, just up the way here, uh, service at 10, okay? And, oh yes, and communion at 10 at uh, St. Paul's. And for session me members, session tomorrow night at 7.30 here at the sanctuary. All right, let's have our call to worship. We worship you, our holy God. We answer the invitation to sit at the foot of the cross and listen to the words of Jesus and receive his final words as he cried out in his suffering. As we sit at his feet, our eyes look upon our suffering Savior. We recognize his thirst there on the cross. And now, in thanksgiving, we acknowledge a new thirst, a thirst for his grace and love. Amen. Let's stand and sing and praise Hosanna. Uh, together. Heavenly. Heavenly Father, we worship today as we see the cross on the horizon. We praise Jesus, the ruler who came in humility to free us from captivity. He came in mercy to free us from the sins we recognize in ourselves and for the sins we easily overlook. He came to show us the full extent of your mercy and love and justice, Father. So we praise you for your kindness and the strength you show to lift our burdens and shoulder them for us in Christ Jesus. We come in humility knowing you have given us your all and we can never offer enough of such overwhelming love. Receive our worship in Christ's name and for his sake, amen. Let's continue our praise as we shout to the Lord. <clears throat> <clears throat> Stay. Time of during worship that we give thanks and through our mission work here at uh, Knox and individually I know people have uh, their things of heart that they contribute to in the work uh, as we are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Uh, today, um, just announcing from that our mission for April will be the food bank. Uh, I know that each food bank and everywhere are struggling, so whether it's uh, monetary or the basket is always at the front of the church, and uh, there's uh, um, usually always something there to go over to Christ Church where the food bank is for this area. So that is our mission for April. Let's give thanks for our gifts. Lord, today we are reminded that Christ offered his life on the cross for us. Now it's our turn to offer God our gifts in gratitude, trusting God to use them to create new life in Jesus' name. Gracious God, when we remember Jesus gave his life for us, our offering seems so small, yet Jesus shows us five loaves and two fish can feed a multitude. A man dying on a cross becomes living bread for a hungry world. Bless these small gifts with your goodness so that the miracle of Jesus' love continues to amaze the world. In his name we pray. Amen. We have our liturgy, Easter liturgy now in... Peg will lead us in that. Jesus, we come to walk the road with you, to follow you to the cross. <clears throat> Prepare ourselves now to follow your footprints in the dust, to understand how you died. <clears throat> To understand how you lived. To understand how you should Jesus, you were fully human, thirsty as you hung there in the hot sun. You felt the urgent need of a parched throat and a dry tongue. You have quelched our thirst with your living water. May we in turn choose to quench the physical thirst of others. <clears throat> While we have entered Holy Week. It begins with Palm Sunday, it moves to Good Friday in which we can worship together with our sister church as Diane noted and we move toward Easter. And sometimes we feel that Holy Week is a very solemn week and in many respects it really is as we contemplate and reflect on what Jesus has done. That here on Palm Sunday, we remember why we have palm branches. When the prophets had long ago said that he will come riding on a donkey, it was a promise that Jesus would be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that the Messiah would come. And so when Jesus told his disciples, I am going to ride for the last time into Jerusalem. Go ahead of me. Find a colt that belongs to who knows who. And just go ahead and untie it. And if the owner asks you, what are you doing? You just say, the Lord has need of it and no questions asked. And so the disciples returned a donkey and the colt to Jesus and he came riding down from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem and the people immediately recognized the prophecy. Their king would come riding on a donkey. And so they picked those palm branches off the trees nearby in the Caribbean. I couldn't reach them this past week but I suspect the ones in Jerusalem were a little more attainable. And they laid down some of their palm branches and they waved others and they took off their coats and they laid them on the ground for a donkey to trample over, but as a sign of respect and worship and honor for the King of Kings. And so that's how we begin our Holy Week, laying down all of our earthly goods, laying down our praises to the King of Kings, and we worship him because we know that he is the Lord of Lords. 
for which we're so grateful. Let's, uh, let's come to our God in prayer as we reflect on all that he has done. Lord Jesus, on this Palm Sunday, we recognize you as the King of Kings. And not just over people who belong to the church, but of the world. You are the one who created all things. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are the answer to why the universe is so perfectly formulated with its gravity and, and the working of the moon and the sun and the stars and the whole universe providing for this earth. You are the one who gives us living water and quenches us thoroughly. And Lord, we, we come to you as did the people long ago, looking upon the Messiah and waiting and hoping and trusting for your redemption. And Lord, sometimes we, we wonder when our waiting will be done, but here we are on Palm Sunday recognizing that you have come and you live among your people then as you do now. And for that, we are so thankful. And how joyful we are that, that you have answered our longing, that we can wave palm branches and praise you. God, it breaks our hearts to think of the suffering and the torment that Jesus went through on the cross, our living water, suffering thirst for us. And yet you satisfy ours in the midst of it. Father, as we continue to worship, we also lay before you our very lives, our broken lives, our joyful lives. And this morning we pray for those especially with health concerns. Would you wrap your arms, Lord, this morning with your healing grace and power upon Tara? We pray for continued grace and journeying and peace for Gary. We pray, Lord, for those who are aging and have aches and pains and tiredness and loneliness. We pray, Father, this morning for those who grieve friends and family who are suffering in whatever way that may be. For those who journey with little Benjamin, who was born with so many health defects, Father, would you be with his parents? We're so grateful and thankful that Benjamin has done so well since his birth. And we pray that you would restore his little body. For the unsaid needs in our lives, Father, we also lift those to you. And Father, as we entrust you with all of these things, we offer up our praise. We praise you not because of what you have done, although we praise you for that. We especially praise you for who you are, our shepherd, our brother, our friend, our Lord, our Messiah, our suffering one. Would you bless us as we open our hearts in worship? May our ears be attentive to what you have to speak. May our hearts receive the change of your grace in our lives. And may we go from this place with joy and thanksgiving, sharing the good news of your salvation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have scripture readers this morning. Awesome. So we'll read our scripture from John 19 and Psalm 23 this morning. Either way. Today's psalm is 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. 
he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And John 19, the death of Jesus. Later, knowing that all was not completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, and so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Here end is the reading. I'm guessing not too many of you are following up on Facebook and TikTok, but there's something called the Saltine Cracker Challenge. Anyone hear of it? No. One. Have you ever tried it? You did? Ha! Ah, I did not know. <laughs> the saltine cracker challenge is that you put two by two crackers, two, four, six crackers, and you need to eat all of them within 60 seconds without taking any water. Now, it's a challenge because, of course, salt and dry crackers literally suck up all the saliva in your mouth. And when it does that, you cannot swallow. I don't recommend watching the videos. It's yucky. Like they're literally gagging, trying to swallow these crackers. There is a world record holder who has eaten 15 crackers in 60 seconds, and it, it just is not pretty. And of course, when he's done, he is so thirsty, he's got a jug of water and chugs it back to help bring all those crackers down. In our scripture today, Jesus says, I thirst. And maybe the saltine cracker ch challenge gives us a slight idea of what it was, but we cannot imagine the depth of his thirst. He'd been beaten, his body inflicted with pain, hanging under the intense Jerusalem Jerusalem sun all day, his, his body rapidly losing fluids. I thirst. It's unimaginable. But there's, there's a greater depth to Jesus' thirst. It's, it's not unusual that when human beings experience pain or suffering or strife or struggle or facing death that they begin to thirst for other things. One might thirst for comfort, for relief, for completion, for answers. Others may long for reconciliation with God, with family. Perhaps new perspectives come in which one may no longer thirst for the beautiful house with the white picket fence and the lawn boy and the green bullet Mustang parked in the driveway. The thirst for something outside of material things or the luxury of Caribbean vacations. Jesus was physically thirsty, to be sure, but there's, there's also a deep spiritual thirst in his cry that cannot be overlooked. You see, Jesus doesn't say, I need water. He makes a statement, I thirst. And just after he receives that wet vinegar on his lips, he declares, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. Jesus has several times throughout scripture called himself the living water that quenches eternal thirst. 
his whole life and ministry being driven to redeem the people of God and bring them to salvation, to satisfy the deepest internal need. The crucifixion itself, we have to understand, is part of God's plan. He orchestrated it, and Jesus freely fulfills that plan. For instance, earlier in John 19, when Pilate threatens Jesus, saying, Don't you realize I have power to either free you or to crucify you? And Jesus answers, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you by my Father. And earlier he says, I lay down my life for the sheep. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. This charge I have received from my Father. So Jesus was, wasn't necessarily thirsting to feel better. Jesus also thirsted for you and I, for all people, for all nations. Listen to how far or see how far we've already come as Christ speaks to us from the cross. I thirst, I long for you to be forgiven and to forgive. I thirst for you to know God and the Son whom he has sent that you might have eternal life. I thirst that you would be one as the Father and I are one. Be the family of God. I thirst for healing for your laments and your pain. And today I thirst for all of you to find the redemption and salvation of God and have abundant life. What is it that you thirst for? And how do you satisfy that thirst? You see, Jesus this morning is inviting us to come to him, the tree of living water, the fountain of all good, the shepherd that guides us to the water of life, the one who says, believe in me and out of you will flow living water, to name just a few texts that speak of Christ's nourishment in our lives. The good shepherd invites us to hear and receive the assurances of Psalm 23, which, which um, Kathy has just read. Now, I encourage you to memorize this short psalm. Encourage your grandchildren and your children to memorize it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for your rod and your strath, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, before my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. An assurance that our every need, our every want is met in Jesus. It makes you wonder and reflect sometimes then on what is the unease and the want in our life. A desire for health, for riches, for comfort, to be understood, to not be lonely. You see, humanity is always desperately seeking for the person, the place, or the thing that will meet their expectation, their need, and their want. And it's not that any of those desires are wrong. But they're secondary to finding rest in God who provides and nourishes your deepest inner need. You see, if God is not the foundation of our every desire, we'll be left feeling empty-handed or disappointed, certainly thirsting for more. As we hear Jesus' words this morning, may our lives reflect that he thirsts for us, that he suffered for our sake, 
that we might be filled with the living water of Christ as he gave to the woman at the well, the one who brings peace, the one who brings reconciliation, the one who brings deep satisfaction. How this satisfies is indeed a mystery that you only receive as you look to God. I can't explain it. But I know many of you here have had those experiences where in your deepest needs you turn to God and it is well with your soul. And you receive a peace that passes understanding. It's phenomenal. In every way, Jesus enables us to say with the Apostle Paul, I'm content in all circumstances. Unbelievable statement. He continues, because of Jesus who gives me strength. In every way, we can proclaim with King David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. In conclusion, Philip Holmes has said it so beautifully. Nothing in this universe is able to produce true goodness unless the good creator is its wellspring. This truth puts all of life in perspective for us. To state it plainly, he says, if goodness is what we desire, we must go to the source of all goodness. Let's, let's pray together. Oh God, it, it breaks our hearts to hear Jesus' suffering cry for water. It breaks our hearts to see the torment that he endured in our place on the cross. Jesus, our living water, suffering thirst for us. Jesus, the righteous one, suffering death and Hades for us. May we, on this day and the days to come again and again, drink deeply from the well of living water, that began to flow from Jesus' blood as he hung there and was broken so that our lives may be refreshed even into eternal life. Holy Spirit, we ask at this time that you would reveal in us, in our hearts, what our true thirst is. We pray that our thirst may be for more living water that all of our desires and our hungers and our wants and our thirst may fall into their proper place. And this we pray to the glory of the crucified Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to play a song once again, a time of reflection. Again, you have a little sheet there and you can if you don't have a pen we'll try and find you one and just reflect on your thirst the thirst that you have the thirst that you need god to answer whatever it may be it's not for me to tell you what that might be place it on your piece of paper bring it up to the front um, over here at the end and just lay it before the box that says I thirst um, as, a, as a physical prayer to God. The song is about three minutes long so somewhere in there whenever you're ready fill out your piece of paper bring it up to the front or hang on to it whatever you wish to do. Um, there's pens here anyone need one just raise your hand we'll grab you one. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we respond to the work of your Spirit in our hearts, knowing that in all your goodness, we have no need of want. You are our provider, our protector. You are our shelter. You are our Lord. And Lord, there are many things that are good things, but that we place before you. And we invite you into those things for all of our needs, all of our wants, for all of our desires, 
Father, would you be the fountain of living water that overflows into all of our sickness, our pain, into all of our brokenness, into all of our relationships, that we may have the streams of living water flow out of our lives to bless and encourage others. We pray this in your name alone. Amen. As we thank God, as we thank Jesus, the living water, let's stand and sing and praise and worship him in all his majesty. Feel free to wave your palm branches. People of God, go forth and thirst for God with all your heart, mind, and soul. For blessed are those who hunger and thirst for theirs will be the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen.